The Point of View is sponsored by First National Bank. First National Bank, how can we help you? And Cowbell Coffee, Cowbell Coffee, taste it, love it. Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we pick the right topics, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. It's an interactive show. If you're watching and you feel like commenting, please send us your thoughts on the WhatsApp number on the screen. Tonight, we have just one big story for you. City, FM City TV was besieged by three pickups with armed police to come and pick up one of our reporters for an offense that they would later describe as possessing a, a video that was unlawfully acquired. We're going to be talking to the two victims, the journalist who was arrested at the National Security, the lady who they came for, and also try and tell you what else we know about this very troubling story. Stay with us. Welcome back. So as we said, this show is dedicated to what happened here. So on Tuesday, around 3 p.m., I was sat in our kitchen with my MD and a few other people and witnessed a pandemonium. It would later turn out that some seven or so armed so policemen led by a plainclothes officer had come to forcibly pick up one of our journalists, Zoe Abu Beidou. We spoke to them, found a way of going to the national security establishment because that's where they said we're coming from and essentially went to see what they, they did by way of letting them have access to her phone taking the information they said they wanted and then we came back but we want to now tell you the full story because that was actually probably an hour and a half since the events that would now later be known as the ctfm raid actually began so caleb kuda is a journalist who was caught in the middle of this initially. I've asked him to join me to talk about what happened to him. Later on, Zoe will tell us herself as well, what she went through while she was there, and then we'll let you what else we know about this story. Caleb, good to have you. Thank you, brother. So, um, I don't even know whether to ask you how are you. How are you doing? No, um, look, when I do this, I feel pain in my back. My side hurts. And anytime I, feel, I receive calls from people, the whole episode plays back, plays back in your mind. So you don't feel well? Not at all. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, I have. I've, HR directed me to the company, got me to a uh, hospital, and they've examined me. So you've, you've gone to do a medical ex check checkup? Yeah. But which, how, which part of your body do you have pain? So I feel pains in my back and then my side. Um, what Is it your, your rib? Or? Yes, my rib, just down here. Mm -hmm. um, people look close and they say they see some marks here. Bruises? Because I was slapped from the back. So you, you have know, bruises on your neck? Yes, I do. So let's fast forward. Yeah. What happened yesterday? What happened? Where were you and what happened? Great. So before what happened yesterday, earlier I, had, I was sent um, to the National Security to have an interview. This was like two years ago. And um, on my way out, I saw some cars parked there, white Chevy cars, and it had weeds grown all over them. I got to understand they were the mass lock vehicles that were caught up in some controversy. So I shared that, and I was like, e these are... You shared them? Yeah, I shared the picture on social media. When, when was this? This was, the first time was pre-COVID, long before COVID. Okay. So when the Fix the Country Now conversation started, I was I, I went to look for it and I shared it again. I was like, this is what is getting people angry and they're saying that you should fix the country because there are a lot of young people out there who are unemployed and all that. Well, there was a backlash. There was a pushback. I was told that I was wrong and that those cars had since been allocated to various people and they were no longer there. What I did, I deleted the post. I apologized. I put up a new post and said that, okay, I'm happy to hear that the cars have been dispersed. If you are anyone who has benefited from these, please let me know. Indeed, someone came to comment that, oh, he benefited. I went into his inbox. We had a chat. Much later, I gathered that I, the cars could still be there. 
But the, the, the cars you photographed in 2019. 19, for which I was told that I had done a bad job saying they are there when they're, they're no longer there. So you went, you, you, so you, you had the cars were still there? The cars were still okay. there. But, I, but then I wasn't very keen on pushing because I had that some time back. So on Tuesday, uh, I was in town running some errands and I was close by. And uh, I, I was like, okay, let me just pass through and see if those cars are still there. The white Chevys, the white if they are still there. My focus was, was on the white Chevys. Chevys. Okay. So I, I got in there. I saw a security man. Where, asked, Where is this? So um, behind the Babaya Sports Stadium and then the conference center, in between that space is the Blue Gate, where they call Blue Gate. That's the national security. The first time I went, I didn't know the national security ministry was there. It was just the big one close to the conference center that I knew. Of. And because I had been there before, I, I could figure... I, in my you knew mind, the area. In my mind, I knew the area. But when I got there, it was a very open space. And I said hello to the security. He was like, who are you looking for? I said, oh, I have an appointment. Much later, when the guy was dro- roped in, he said, I told him I was looking for an abana. I think that was to get him out of trouble. And I didn't push back. Okay, so I got in there. Because I knew where the cars were, I went straight. And so just describe the place. Yeah. You enter through the stadium side. Yeah. There are two big buildings in front of you. Yeah. Then there's a, there's a lot a of huge cars. Space, yeah. But those are normal That's cars of other people. Normal cars. So these cars you're talking about, where are they? So if you're getting closer to the, they call it ESS or EES, which is close to the, um, the conference center, the cars are just close to the entry to that huge building looks like very palatial. So that's where the cars were. So I took some photos and I was on my These way. are the white cars. These are the white cars. The Chevy cars you took pictures of previously. The Chevy cars I took pictures of. To confirm them. whether the claim that they had been dispersed was true or not. So Precisely. you needed evidence of the cars still being there. Precisely. I just asked How long did you spend taking those photos? <sighs> it's like, not too long because was I, I needed to be swift and get out. And let me tell you what I saw. When I saw the cars, I realized that it was a fleet, but this time it was not as many as I first saw. They were fewer. So suggesting that maybe some of the cars had been... But still, you had weeds on it. Some of them. Just the same style as I saw it. Just that the earlier one, it was greener. greener so, okay. And I saw that the, the seats in the car had rubber on it. And so it means that they are new and used cars. And used cars. And you could tell uh, the color of the car. A cracky, cracky. That's a crack. So you walked to where the cars were parked. Yes. And then you took photos. Yeah, so you could be taking while you're walking. Okay. So it's not like you stand there for everybody to see you are filming. So you just took that. You just took those. And then I was on my way out. Now here so the same entrance you came from the stadium same, side? The same entrance. So you didn't same. go, did you walk to the ministry or the building? Not at all. You, did, you, had, did you cross the car park? I had no business. So you went towards the shed side? I went towards the shed side. And that's where you see the black cars, some V8s and all. So I saw some V8s there. And they were all dusty. And I was like, eh. So yeah. on your way out after taking the white Chevy On my pictures, way out after taking the white Chevy. And I saw black V8s covered in dirt and the, the tires were looking at this. V8 and Futro, V8 and Futro. So I did a quick video and I was just on my way out. Because I was just really close to the gates out of the place. And then, um, so sorry, on your way out of the place, you did a quick video. Yes. Of the other cars, the VH, not the, the white I cars. Said, not the white cars. But my real so focus. Were you walking whilst you were doing the video or you were just standing? Yeah, I was moving. You were moving. I was, I was moving. But yeah. were you, I just want to know how you were holding the camera just to swear that was it a conspicuous thing? Were you saying, yeah. here are my, the cars? No. So you were holding the phone? So if you can hold it close to your Show chest. me how you did it. So um, it's quite like, okay. So you can hold the phone close to your chest while you're going. Ah, so you were narrating. Precisely. So that you didn't film your face. You were filming the cars At on your way out. Precisely. These are the cars parked? Under the shed. Under the shed. Right by the wall. Okay. So I was just about making my way out of the gate. And then there was this man in a car in there who saw me and said, Hey, where are you going? And then I said, um, I became jittery. I said, uh, I came to see someone, but the person's not there. He said, who was that? Basically, he had seen me. So he was like, why were you taking the videos? And then I said, I'm sorry. Um, I, I tried to explain to him why I came. He wouldn't listen. He raised the alarm and said, arrest him. So he, he effected that call. And by Do you this know time, around what time is this? Is it 2.33? So, so this should be 
in fact, I lost sense of time. True. But this was on your way after you had done your... Precisely. Do you know how long you spent in there before you were coming out? Oh, I didn't do more than 20 minutes. It was, it was really... Because you, I've done something... To, uh, so it was a short time? It was a very, okay. really short time. So he, he raises an alarm, and then what happens? And then they come at me, and immediately... I, w- I panicked, so I decided to share some of the photos I had taken, particularly of the white cars, which was my focus, with um, Zoe, my very good friend. So whilst they were coming for you, you did that? Yes. Okay. Just so that, and, and in my thinking, they were going to force me take the phone and delete it and caution me and say, walk out of here or something like that. So I sent the videos to Zoe. But it turned out they were more, uh, they were bent on showing me um, they were bent on dealing with me because then they took me to a small post when you enter the on the left, on the left there's a mango tree there there, there are a number of police officers there. so by this time a plain clothes gentleman had come and was like yeah these are the people who are causing blah 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 no, let's no, no, blah 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 yeah they said they are, they are causing problem for us already there is tension in the system and they are trying to kind of so I just, just, just take your time so the gentleman who raised the alarm yeah. had seen you recording some video yeah. near the cars that you on, were on the way out. Yeah. He raises an alarm. And they were, what did they accuse you of when they initially raised the alarm? They, 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 first, they were like, how did I get in the force entry or something like that? Uh-huh. So then they take me to the police post where we met DSP Azugu. By this time, the gentleman in plain clothes had gone ahead of us to tell everybody that I had come there, I had breached their protocols, and I was trying to cause them some chaos and trouble. So all the police officers there became very agitated and aggressive towards me. So the way he reported yes. what you were doing got them angry. Yes, infuriated. And um, so they took me to a small office. I, I showed them my ID card to tell them that, look, I'm from City. It, I, 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 I agree. I, I shouldn't have taken them. Let's delete it and please let me go. But they wouldn't. They took me to see Azugu. I showed him my ID card. He said, "Where are you from?" I said, "City." Who do you? Know? I said, "Richard Mensah." Then he called Richard. I didn't even give um, Richard's number. To him. He called OJ. And so by the time he spoke to OJ, in my mind, then it was it was going to be sorted. But this time they had taken my phone, and they were looking through my chats, and um, they found out that I had sent photos to Zoe. That is when the gentleman started chatting Zoe as though I was the one talking to him. So around this time, they said, take a statement. They pushed me. I sat on a chair. They slapped me from the back. And they were... Which of the people are you talking about? The police officers. These are men in uniform. Some were bearded. They had guns. Did you see any names? Mask. Unfortunately, no. Mm-hmm. But I heard names like Osei and Ousu. Those are the names that I heard. So... Then and this is still in the small office. This is still office, in the small office, very close Azubu's to Azubu's office, near the mango office. tree. Yes. So I saw a very elderly policeman. He looks like the traditional policeman, you see, because these were younger, with beard, more brazen. I was trying to appeal to them that I've worked with police before. I've heard, just please, sort of go out to them. But this time they had beating him, like, oh, what make a cry? But they was just still beat, slapping me from the back. You'll be talking to another one, and someone will just come and slap you from the back, and you feel dizzy at once. And, you're, and it's like, it was so fast. And in that same in space? In that same space. Had, at this point, had they handcuffed you? At this point, they had handcuffed me, and every now and again, one will come and press it harder so that I feel the head. I, I was so thirsty. One guy came in. He was like, oh, kill him. Then he got me water. Even drinking the water was difficult. Cause because of the, the, the way the handcuff was. Did you speak to Azugu? Um, yeah. After he spoke to um, OJ, he didn't deal with me much. He was very angry because the guy had really, really worked him up. And he was, he was so sure that I was just there to cause me and for them. Uh, just, do you know what the gentleman told them? Did he tell them you were reporting or you were broadcasting or just filming? He told them that I had come there to film the national security installation and some other things, which, in all sincerity, I didn't do. It was the cars yes. that you had come to take So, you know, if you, are fil- if you are taking the pictures um, secretly, you are not watching. It's later when you finish that you pay attention see to which it. Answer to so, if mistakenly, 
it, I'm taking any of the national security buildings. That was not it wasn't part. And I tried to explain to them, but still they wouldn't listen. Then along the line, uh, they called somebody, captain or something. He came in some green jacket, pink shirt. He looked very civil and nice. So I tried to talk to him, that boss, please help me. By this time, they had taken me out. We we're under a mango tree. They are taking me out. We're under a mango tree. When I saw him, I tried to, immediately he said I should kneel down. And then he kicked me. So I'm told. This person is not in military uniform. He's not in police. military uniform. He looks very dapper. He's wearing green. Yes. He's, do you know his Pink name? Shirt. <laughs> what could his name be? Yes, Ajiman. They called him Ajiman. They called him Ajiman. And so when, and when he came, you were trying to appeal to him. I was trying to appeal to him that said, they have beaten me enough, like, I beg you. Like, just let me go. At least you can, they have deleted a thing. Because he asked me to kneel down, and I'm tall, he's there. He kicked me. You can imagine where his feet landed. He killed you in the groin? Yes. At this point, you do fall? I was, you already knelt? I was, I was already kneeling, so I was dusty and all. So at the time, he gave them instruction. When we're going back to where Azubu was, he said, the boy said, Captain, Kasasi, Amburu, and Newewu. That's what they told you. That's what he told me. So then he leaves you there. What, what, what did he tell you after he slapped you? He didn't. He, yeah, he was very angry. So he was like, you, "You're trying to cost." Um, I can't quote him verbatim because too much was running through my mind. But by this time, um, they were upbeat on coming to the office to fetch Zoe. You knew that they were going to do that. Yeah, they were saying that. And so I think in their chats with Zoe, they had asked her where she was, and she said studio are next. And they asked me why is studio are next, and I said it's in our. So which means that Zoe was chatting, thinking she was talking to you. Exactly. Because she didn't know that you had been precisely arrested. Amazing. This is the point of view. Kalakura is telling a story. Zoe will join us as well. This is the story that happened at CTFM on Tuesday, the 11th of May. Kalakura has just narrated the first part of the story, and that will not be all. There was a lot more to come. When we come back, we'll show you how the team came with Caleb to City to arrest Zoe and what happened in the aftermath. Stay with us. major supermarkets and shops near you. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight, we're telling you the inside story or giving you the insights of what happened here on Tuesday. It actually started at the National Security Head Office. And as Caleb has described, there's a National Security Ministry building and then a, a National Security building next to it. He had gone there to take photos of some white Chevys. On his way out, he also did a short video of some other cars. An operative sees him and, and raises an alarm. He's arrested and brutalized by first the men who were with Azugu, and later on by the man who is, you call what? Um, Colonel Ajeman. He was in green. He was in green. And he asked you to he kneel down. He asked me to and kneel And this was outside? Yes. Under the mango under tree? Under the mango tree. And then he slapped you? Kicked me in the lungs. When he left, what happened? So by this time, he had emboldened them to manhandle me. So we went back into the, the, uh, the office that has Azugu there. So the boys was like, ah, and there will be this to throw, what? No, no, no. 
and another guy comes and so someone just like their hands are so big and thick. When one hit is like medros. So by this time they wanted to come and pick Zoe. And so they said like where is studio are next? And I, I tell them it's in the office and I was in cuffs all the time. So you are they are chatting with Zoe, who thinks she's starting with you? Yes. And they are coming here to pick her up. Yeah. Okay. So then we they come with like three pickups and I was in one. There were two guys by me, one here, one here. This guy sounds a bit reasonable. I didn't know best. I was trying to explain to him. I said, no, we'll be there for more person. We say, oh, and that's how that we're trying to have a rapport, thinking that things will ease up. And the guy here, oh my god. Then so we got here. You were sitting you were flung by the two of them. The two of them. When you tried to explain what you were doing, are you saying he didn't understand or he wouldn't listen? What were they saying to you in the car when you were coming? Yes, so then um, the gentleman, um, he's fairer. He's fairer. He was a bit more calmer and all. But he was just trying to say that the media is causing problem for the system and all that kind of thing. And the guy in plain clothes who was chatting, Zoe, was in the front seat. And then he kept engaging me here and there. So while we were coming... Um, they came with one of the cars ahead with the strobe lights and so whilst you are saying this we will now show you those images so this is so Caleb is in one of the pickups that are parked on the screen you are seeing so then Zoe is standing outside on the phone who are you talking to? Were you on the phone? Yeah, I was, I was talking to someone else. We were talking to somebody else. Yeah. So you had left where we were and you were talking on the phone. Yes. So when they came, they knew it was Zoe or you told them this was Zoe. They asked me um, if that's her. In fact, they said, oh, yeah, no, no. Some of them know us. So no, they, they like, saw you on TV. No. <laughs> so the moment they saw her, they knew that was her. And for me, because she was on the phone and I suspected they were engaging her, I felt she was actually out because of of them. And, ah. and, and when we got here, I was in the car and... This, everybody rushed in. I was like, let me stay in the cup. He said, no, I wanted to embarrass you. It just brought me down for everybody to see that I was in cups. And the neighborhood, people just came around. Yeah, but people, see, people see you in cups. Doesn't necessarily mean you've done anything wrong. <laughs> so, I, 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 Bernard, I'm, I'm like, if I had caused one of the serious judgment deaths in this country, they beat me that way, I felt that handcuff, I would have understood. But I have friends from Lincoln who are still unemployed, and there are cars here. And I hear that these cars are still there. I'm like, okay, let's go and see if it's still there or not. So that was your crime. crime. Let's continue the story. So, you are standing outside. Obviously, you've been pointed out. What happened? Okay, so before that, um, I received um, videos from Caleb at 2.34 okay. p.m. And I saw it around 2.52. And because I already knew about um, his earlier post and um, what it brought about, when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, it's still there. And the... He says, yes, where are you now? At this point, I thought I was chatting him. And I told him where I was. I said, studio are next. Then the next thing that came is, I'm hungry. Let's find some food to eat. Let's go and find something to eat. And then... Presumably to lure you out of out. the office. That was the intention. So if I had said, okay, where? Once the person told me where I was supposed to come, they would have picked me up from there. Huh. But this, I didn't know who you were chatting. I didn't you, know. you thought it was Caleb. So I received a call from Richard Mensa, OJ, and he says, Zoe, where are you? I, so I said, I'm here. He came. He said, did Caleb send you anything? I said, yes. He says he's been arrested. I said, oh, wow. And that is how come I was able to make sense of the message I received. Because Caleb and I are very good friends, even on social media. I mean, but not to the extent of, let's go and find something to eat. You get it. So... That, is, that, that raised eyebrows. So I exclaimed, hey, where are you day? And he says, on my way to the office. And I said, okay, get here and let's talk. And the person says, okay. At this point, they realized that um, I didn't answer the way they wanted. So they called me using Caleb's phone. So the person calls and says, hey, I'm so so-and-so, Director of Operations, National Security. We need you to come here now. And I said, come here for what? What is my crime? What have I done? And he says... Um, and I said, I can't come there because I have super superiors, I have bosses. You have to let them know because once, and he said, oh, your colleague Caleb is here and we have um, checked on his phone and we have in, um, realized that he sent you some video. So we need you here for question. And I said, okay, that's fine. Let me get to my bosses and then I'll revert. The person was calm on the phone. He says, okay. 
So I hung up, called Richard Mensah, why he said, the people have called me, they use Caleb's phone. He says, oh, but these people, DS I told them DSP Azubu is dealing with me, so they should, I mean, deal with me on that level. So he says, call them back and tell them that they should, I'll do with DSP Azubu. So I called back, there was no response. I went to the cafeteria to eat, and that is when you, I met you and Samens there. So I got a call, and then um, I walked out to the car park to receive the call, so I stopped eating. So it was at that point that I saw three um, police vehicles, top speed, coming. They just parked. There she is. Oh, no, no, no. And he just walked to me. Who is this he? Is there a policeman? No, he was plain clothed. Plain clothed. In and, mask as well. Yes, and he um, was a leader of the group. And he says, okay, I was the one chatting with you. I was like, okay, give me your phone. So he seized my phone immediately. He snatched your phone? Yes. While you were standing outside? Outside. So I, I told the person, I'll call you back. I just hung up and he took my phone from me. Then I heard someone say, catch her, arrest her. And I was like, for what? Then I heard that- This oh, is the phone you're looking for, you have the phone. phone, okay. Then someone cocked the gun. I was scared at that point. He cocked the gun? Yes. I got scared at that point. And because I knew you and Samens were at the cafeteria, I immediately ran to the place. So they were chasing me there. So it actually chased me there. Someone had to use the back because he thought maybe I was going so that they'll catch me. So that is when I got there and Samen says I should sit down. And so he picked it up from there. And so that is what happened. Wow. This is still the point of view. We're trying to give you the story from our side, what happened, Caleb Kuda and Zoe Abu Beidu. So this is around three something. Yeah, this was around okay. three. So then, of course, viewers, we've explained to you that Samens, myself, Richard Mensa, and Anna Seydou went with Zoe in our vehicle to the National Security Place. So they drove back with you there. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, when we got back there, you need to explain what happened, right? Okay. Because we went to Azugu's office and spoke to him. Yes. And after the discussion, it was our understanding that this is not anything serious. Mm. But he said you had to go yes. to his superior yeah. before they would release you. Mm. Which was when they said that we should not follow. follow. Yeah. Because I was with some men walking with Zoe and they said, mm. now Zoe has to go to the superior, which is the gentleman I believe you were, you were with. So we're actually walking to the um, superior. And the others were calm. And then he, he said, why is she not in handcuffs? Who said this? Um, this is the Colonel Ajima I, I, I later got to find out he, his name. Why is she not? Why in is she not in handcuffs? Why is she? Follow me. So when you and some men were following, then he said, I don't want the others. Let the lady follow me alone. So then I moved, followed him. At this point, I had to keep calm and maintain my composure. And then I walk in there and Caleb was seated there. Um, they asked me to sit down. Um, I details my name, my contact, where I was coming from, timing, and all that. So I did that. So um, the Colonel Ajimai instructed them to do that and told them that when I am done, they should bring me up. So um, there was a lady at the front desk who took the details and as they said, it's procedure. I took off my ring, I took off my earring, my watch, my glasses. But I told them that my glasses, if someone will lead me, of course I can go. But if not, I have to wear it. Wear it. So after deliberations, they said, okay, um, let her wear the glasses. So I wore it and they asked me to sit down. So I sat down for about five, seven minutes. And then um, Colonel Ajimai comes again with two phones. He puts it on the counter. Which one belongs to you? And then I said this, open it. I opened it and he says, delete the videos and the pictures. And I deleted them, as in the ones that Caleb sent to me. So I deleted them. And he instructed, delete every other picture and video on your phone. Every video I had on my phone, all my memories, I mean, my picture, he said I should delete everything. And my pictures were a lot. So I was like, wow, that's a lot. And then he exclaimed, he was on phone at that time, he was talking to someone. Don't let me get angry, do you want to stay here for long? I just kept quiet and I was deleting. Whilst I was deleting, the plain clothed guy who was speaking to me, uh, who was chatting me as a Caleb, he was there engaging me, to, trying to find out why 
I said, oh, wow, it's still there. And I explained to him. On my left was a, cl a, a uniformed military man. Uh, uh, military p p uh, man. There was a military man that was a police officer. So the two of them were there um, to ensure, to manning that I delete all the, my videos and my photos on my phone. So that's what, in fact, the videos, the pictures were a lot. It was a lot that Kenel Ajima went up and he came to meet me still deleting the like video. Like how many minutes? Hmm. This would be like five minutes now. And you still hadn't finished? I hadn't finished. So I was still doing it and he came down with someone. Uh, I don't know his name, but he was also on phone and he was chatting with Kenel Ajima and he says, um, where, where is the lady? Come, where's the phone? Bring your phone. I gave my phone to him. And he went out with uh, Kennel and he says I should follow them. So the two of them were chatting. So I gave them, so I excused myself and gave them space. After speaking to him, he just came and handed my phone to me and he says, Take it, let's go. And so, on our, whilst we were leaving towards the car park where you and Samant and um, Richard Mensa and Anas were, um, uh, he says, um, where are you from? Are you also at CTFM? I said, yes. Okay. So I asked him. I was um, ordered to delete everything. Should I still go ahead? Because I haven't finished. I still have a few more pictures and videos to delete. He says, don't worry. Let's go. And that's how... Um, that's how you came out. So you spent a lot of shorter time there. Yeah. So when the two of you went together, how she was doing this, were you there? Yes, I was there. I was asked to take off my shoes. And um, there was this round, thick guy who was like, yeah, I know this guy. He's been here before. He, he, you know, he was very angry. He was speaking gun. Like, you know, when they are trying to frighten you, that kind of thing. Beat him and that kind of thing. And there was the military man. By this time, there were some two lawyers who were sitting there and they were like, are you Caleb? Good, are you the general? And it was like, don't talk to him. That kind of thing. It was a very, very intimidating atmosphere. So they took off my belt. They asked me to go into a room. It's called detention room. It's just at the reception, but it's on the left. It's a very long building. Ventilation is poor. There's so much heat there. I met like, I, I saw Chinese, like eight Chinese nationals and six guys. I later understood uh, uh, Western Togoland uh, people who are, people are led to be part of Western Togoland. So these are like suspects in a room? Yes, suspects in a room. And there was a man, tall man there called Captain. And his job was to whack me out. So he made me squat, like press up 30. I did some other exercises till I was so tired I almost fainted. I fell on the ground. I fell. So at this, this is when Zoe had left. When Zoe had so left. So this is around 5.30. 5.30. Yeah. And so at this time, your phone was still in your possession. At, at this time, my possession. phone was still not in my possession. I fell down, turned to my left. I looked up and, oh, here's a Chinese dash. I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm, What's going on here? I'm, I'm in my own country with... Yeah. yeah. But they were also sort of in detention. They were, yeah, okay. for a different so thing. So what happened after that? We had, I was there for roughly about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Then he asked me to come. We were going to the top. I was presumed that's exactly... Yeah, but I didn't get to go. Yeah. Okay. So then we used a lift while we were going. Another hit. It from just, who? From, from this, this guy at this time. There's a guy at the reception. And there's another one he's working with. He comes in earlier to speak ever with me. It's like, that's the, it's, he's doing his work. So by this time... And his he, work is to be hitting you. Has, you know, and it looks like the more there is a superior around, the, the heftier the punch. It's like people are trying to impress... Where you. did they hit you? They hit me in the back. Like I said, when I do this, it's pain. It's pain. So whilst you're on your way up... The, the beating was just ongoing. It was just... They were just molesting you. Oh, I was like, what? what no. Still in handcuffs? Still in handcuffs. All through. I'm like, no, but me, no, by this time, I was not in handcuffs because okay. I had to press up and do all those... So the handcuff had been The handcuff car, it took like three keys for them to be able to open. They were I don't not know sure which because one it was. It was because how, of how tight they closed it or something. I don't really know. So, so by this time, we went to an office. There's a backstory to that. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you. So apparently... <laughs> Maybe when some men comes, you tell that story. Okay. Because apparently, the person who had... The keys to your handcuffs had left. Oh. So, so he had to then call for them to. It was a long complicated story. Crap. So when you went to the top, yeah. this is around six o'clock now. Yeah. We went there, we saw a short man in political suit, very tough, rotund. And um, my first salutation is the punch. Because then he has also been briefed that we're here to cause mayhem. 
I mean, the briefing was such that the moment you see they me, don't ask you a question. No, they just I, start beating and you. And I try to explain that, boss. I don't have any interest in security installation. It's just that ah, no. It's, it was it just kept going on and on. And this one said I was going to take statement, and by the time he was, he say he would detect something and write. Then he would detect something. He also write and start writing your statement. By that time. The gentleman who led, who was chatting Zoe in plain clothes, came and said, Man can't show, I'm why your story. I'm going to say, because of this, the video he did on Sunday, you know, I went to the, the Black Star Square to do a video that went square. I'm going to say, so he was accusing me of, like, he was like, the journalists have gone to publish a story that we have arrested him because of the Sunday video. I'm like, boss, why did me phone the whole day? Who can I talk to? You know, and we're just trying to strike. At this time, tempers are stimmed, and then we're writing. That's when a very fine gentleman came in. I think his name is Dasimeni. That guy was really nice. Seeing him was such relief. He came and asked the people, what happened? I was like, this is so needless. Could have just handled this. And um, he came, and then I think he was talking to someone on the phone. I was like, I should explain to the person what I came there to do. And then I explained all that. And then he left. And then the, the short guy who punched me several times made me write the statement and all of that. And then the Mr. Asmani came back again. And um, over some short period, we came down. My phone was still in there. So he called and said, Mufa, Caleb, phone number. It was like 20 minutes. We called it. Mr. Mufa, Caleb, phone number. So we stood there for like some time before my phone came. And then we left. He gave me his contact and assured me that if I needed to know anything, I should let him know. And so it was his presence that stopped all those things. Yeah. So until he came oh. from, but between the time, did Azugu hit you himself? No, Azugu didn't. He looked very, very angry. And, and but he didn't touch you? No, he didn't touch me, but his men, God. One was holding something that looked like langa langa, you know langa langa. It was, it was blunt. And I was scared. I didn't know whether you used the side or the pointed. I, that did he use thing, it to hit you? They, luckily they didn't, but the sight of it alone, I was just okay. praying. As well wow. as like, oh, bomb fire, oh, you're Christian. Oh. At what time did you leave the place? I left around 7.30, 10.45. With Richard? Uh, yeah, with, OJ with, was with me at this time, so I came with OJ. Richard Mensah, okay. One of the conversations that came up, they searched me, this is in Azugu's office. They searched me, I put my money there, they said, can you know, see real I confirmed, is that your khaki? Say yes, how old are you? I'm quiet. I said, how old are you? I said, I'm 20, 28, oh, okay. Only how many years me are police and so many bicycle. And one of them was like, Oh yeah, Jenny. And another one says, Oh yeah, Benny. And I knew that if I confirmed that, my beating would have doubled. And for some reason, I just said, Oh, me free Cape Coast. And another one said, Oh, Cape Coast for your nuts, my husband. You know? Oh, my brother, you This is still the point of view. It may sound funny, but it's very serious. This is. Um, the narration. I'm sure other people have their versions, but this is actually what happened Sorry. to our journalist who went to take photos of vehicles parked. And um, yes, this is what happened. We'll try and tie up the loose ends when we come back because it's, it's a very serious situation. Caleb had to go to the hospital today. Did they give you any medicine? Yes, he gave me some prescriptions. He said that I need to do some massaging of some balm there. He said the injury wasn't... Because they, were, they didn't use any weapon physically. There were, they weren't any... They just used their hands to ah, hit you. They just used their hands. So he gave me some painkillers and some drugs too. The doctor was like, oh, I, I, I know you. What happened? Like, uh, you explained to him? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. As for you, nobody touched you? No, they didn't. They didn't touch me. Uh, someone actually explained, said... Caleb, they are not finding court inside, but lady, no, or a fine lady, you know, mo 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 munja ne, and they yen she. So, and you, and you know the bravado when we're leaving, like one of the like sped so like the car was in, they sped like just here and here, and they were yeah. they were teasing you, so they were teasing. Ah. You. They said the way you run, you can do national athletics and things. We're just they, they were having fun, thinking they had terrorized the whole edifice, and that was the point to show us a lesson that. Now at this point, they had created them, a scene because them. they had created a show scene. Them. People, I mean, community members at the back, everybody was show around. And when some men came to call me, Zoe, let's go. I, I had to be sure. I said, am I going in your car? Because what I had seen, I really got scared. And he says, of course. So I joined him in his, um, 
in his car and everybody was around people watching i mean you know their offices around they had come out and everybody was just looking at me and i just entered the car and we left we'll, we'll be right back this is still the point of view i'll, I'll try and just get some conclusive thoughts from some men's because he was there with us as well and his journalist has been uh, manhandled what was he going to do we'll take a break this is the point of view thank you for staying we'll be right back Wakes me up better than a cup of cowbell coffee. Delicious coffee aroma. Mmm. How can you forget your lines again? I'm sorry, sir, just that it tastes really good. Cowbell coffee! Enjoy the delicious creamy coffee taste of three in one cowbell coffee. It's a beautiful day. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. It's a good day to meet every challenge. It's a good day to want more out of life. It's a good day to wish for it, work for it, go get it. Familiar taste, a delicious indulgent with a flavor you just can't hide. Refreshing energy, gives so much for so little. For a strong performance, you've come to the right place. Good day energy drink, why wait a minute to enjoy a good day when every second counts? Good day energy drink, keeps you going. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Welcome, welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight we're bringing you the inside story of the raid on CTFM, the precursor, the raid itself, and the aftermath. So Caleb Kuda is here with us. He narrates how he went there to take photos of some white Chevrolets. On his way out, he started filming some other cars back there. Somebody raised an alarm. He was caught manhandled by men working with DSP Azugu and also assaulted by, um, the, what was the name of the person? Uh, Kenel Ajiman and some other people at the National Security. So, I mean, so of course, Zoe has already narrated how we, we got to uh, uh, be involved. But what was going through your mind when all of that was happening, when the people came here? What was your... No, I mean, when I saw the people, I, I, I actually thought it was a joke because they looked so unprofessional. I mean, they couldn't even speak English properly. Um, they not well dressed and camped as police people, and and so I knew that I wasn't going to get anywhere, and and that's the reason I asked Zoe to just take a seat, and I called them and asked them to go, and I will, will come with them. Um, but so when we but when we got there, the meeting with Azugo was a very civil meeting, and we well, I, I was under the impression that after meeting Azugo, that was the end of the issue. Well. You see, these guys are still living in the past. And what I mean by past is, you know, the revolution days and how junior officers and, and no ranks people could just do anything anyhow. We, we still have a semblance of that structure uh, lurking around in our security systems. So for them, it was a field day. We, we can do whatever we want to do um, before our superiors, um, you know, are brought in until they saw us. And so it was like a wake up. Oh, you are here. And you could see as you go, oh, sir, you are here. And, and that kind of, oh, so you are Bernard. Yes, this is it. And, and then he noticed that, no, this thing is beyond him now. So he said, please, um, then you should go and see my boss. 
who happens to be the... Um, it, it turned out to be the Kenel Ajiman. On our way, he did not want to talk to us. Um, yeah, because he had his mind made up. Um, again, something... So I he's the was, director of operations of national security. Is that the name? Some position, I, I, I'm not, I'm not I don't sure, know. Not but sure. he, so, he, he's so in your that, mind, you were going to simply say, what, take the phone, take the to, pictures, and let's to, go away or what? To kind of understand what they were looking for. Okay. And, um, and he wouldn't listen to us. And the, the head of the guys in uniform is called Ampedu. He's an, a chief inspector. I, I couldn't even understand what he was saying. You know, so I said, let's go and see your boss. And then we were met along the, the way by this gentleman, oh, sorry, this man called Kenel Ajiman, who was introduced to us as their boss. He wouldn't listen to anything. I tried to get his attention so that we can have a better understanding. He just walked off and also insisted that we should not follow. And that in his so words... So, Lieutenant Kennel, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry. So, he didn't even have a chat with you? No, 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 no. He wouldn't no. listen to you? No. And so, um, I said, and you heard me say, that I can understand that you are security guys and you are doing your work. But just take note that we are also media men who will do our work. But guess what? Today, when you are done doing your work, we will have a field day doing our work for a very long time. It's and you can't stop us. But he still left. So he that's left. when he went to uh, Zoe and Caleb to the narration. So when he left, we were minded to go beyond him and call people and call other people up um, the, uh, chain. the chain and Edward Asmani uh, responded to us so that's your your savior that, that was my and, of and then I would need to make this point you see um, governments in government out should understand how to package our security system because nobody and you don't you don't need rocket science to know that today you are in power tomorrow you are not in power and the security system you establish while you are in power is the same security system you may fall victim to we were hoping that 20 30 years down the line this primitive way of handling journalists and so-called suspects would have changed. And I thank God for so many very educated, in fact, very educated as an understatement. You know as many highly educated gentleman, Oxford graduate, you know, he has everything. And he was so decent. I mean, the guy was so when, decent. When you spoke to him, did he know what had been? Did you get the impression he knew? He said he had been informed, but he didn't have the details. So he made a call to somebody. And I could hear him speaking to the person, kind of brief me what was going on. So, so it means that he probably wasn't aware of what was happening? Of course. I mean, at this level, he wouldn't have to be told everything like that, you know. And I, I'm telling you that what they do is that they delay so they can have a few day with their, with their suspects. You understand? And, and I'm hearing for the first time how he was beaten. So he didn't even know. Because I thought that when the, the man in suit came, that was the end of the problem. But apparently it was... No, so... When eventually I demanded that I had to see him before I leave, at which point they led me to where he was, and I called you out okay. of the place. The man actually said in my presence that, oh, the inmates are beating him, and he doesn't want anybody to touch him again. So he, in front of me, he shouted across to the inmates that, hey, Obi, I didn't say canopa, remember Chinese, they boku fu, you know. So the man was tricking me. He looks at me. Ah, and so that was when you realized that this is a serious... <laughs> you know, so I said, okay, don't worry, let's deal with Zoe, we'll come back and deal with, um, you know. So went out and had a meeting with um, um, Asmani again. And I mean, I, 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 I was just saying, so won't the others see reason like you do? It makes your work difficult. If we are still practicing this primitive way of security, just body checking and beating people physically. So did they actually talk to you to say what's going on? Or they were... No, 
nobody. I mean, mm -hmm. Bernard, the kind of people there, no. Even if he explained, crowd, they won't understand. So, and that's so, so the point. my man, no. He's such a disappointment to national security. Such a disappointment. So, I mean, he I'm won't listen to anything, and he was beating, kicking him in the groin. Are you okay? So, I mean, Who does really that in 2021? A wicked person. A journalist. A journalist properly identified as a journalist. Yes, he may have done something inappropriate. But that's why they are the courts. If he, people do things wrong, they are processed for court. You don't go kicking his groin in the name of national security. In two, three years time, this, this Ajman guy will go on retirement and God will judge you and your family. You will see. This thing, we shouldn't allow these things to happen. When we were fighting for this democracy, Ajman, where were you? Today, you call yourself national security and come and be kicking people. I'm sure people would want to know what we want to do with this because at least now they've been released. But these details are now coming out because obviously yes. after yesterday, he had to go home, sleep and everything else. So he's now actually telling us what's going on. So we, are, we have to make it. I'm sure, they, I mean, they've heard. So we don't know whether we are going to... But it's so unfortunate. Yeah. It's so unfortunate that, look, they have to take action against this Colonel Ajman guy because he's a disgrace to the government. He's a disgrace to the national security. And he's not fit for that job. And I'm saying it. He's not fit for that job. For this person to treat this young man like this because he has done something you consider inappropriate... This is why we fought for this democracy. Take him to court. This is what we are saying. Process him to court. This is what we call due process. Kenal Ajima, if you don't understand. So, yes, yes, he's done something. We are not here to defend whatever he did. If he did wrong, he's wrong. Wrong is wrong. Process him to court. The due process of the law. Let it take it through. Bernard, my father called me this morning. Mm -hmm. And... He made me cry. Why? What did he say? He, 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 he said, he said, at this point, I should try and put the family first. And my father of four people would not say that. He is some humble pastor in somewhere, a church of Pentecost, so for our so for And he called me and said, Charlie, put the family first. I'm like, As in, stop their work. You know, you know, because my dad will tell you to go all out, seek truth pursue justice, seek fairness for everybody. For him to tell me that, I should think about my family first. This morning I cried and I said, I, that means I should give up on this country because if my father of all people can tell me that. But what does he mean by saying that? He said, no, no, no. I do my name. What does he say? Well, we, we've been trying to make sense of this very troubling story and um, 24 hours after it happened, we have now brought you the details we have seen a lot of the comments you are passing. It's a very emotive subject for us because of the details that Caleb has put out. Um, make of it what you want, but this is not the last you hear of this. Obviously, it will not be because it's, 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 <laughs> it's happened one too many times. And as you can see, the MD of the company is very upset, as, of course, all well-meaning people should be. It has to be wrongly condemned. I have said on radio that the government's next actions will show whether they support what happened or not. So we wait to see. The ball is firmly in the court of the authorities. We will also do what we have to do on the basis of what processes the law has for us. So we'll see how that pans out as well. Thank you for watching tonight's edition of The Point of View. Caleb, commiserations to you, and thank you for doing your job as a journalist. And I'm sure you'll become the better off for it. Mm. Certainly you will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Nobody you. deserves this in their job. Samens, thank you for talking to us as well. And of course, earlier on we had Zoe Abu Beidu, who was also initially detained but released after a few minutes. My name is Ben Adavle. Thank you for watching tonight's edition of the show. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. The Point of View is sponsored by First National Bank. First National Bank, how can we help you? And Cowbell Coffee, Cowbell Coffee, taste it, love it.